Welcome back to Foundry Fastlane. I'm Connor, and this is part two of Speedrun Your First Workflow in Palantir Foundry. In part one, we built the data pipeline, ingestion, and ontology. In part two, we'll create the workshop app and the actions that users can take on that app and henceforth the ontology. Ready? Let's jump in. In this part of the course, we will be building the Orders Inbox Workshop app. This workshop app is meant to display all of our orders via this table below and some high level charts above. We have a pie chart and a count over here to the right. In this centralized hub, this is where fulfillment managers would manage any orders and apply any assignment. So as you can see here, I could click into this one. Status is open and there's no assignee. I could click this assign button and assign to myself. Furthermore, I could filter the data set here on the right on assignee or really any of these values we see over here. To start building this, navigate to your project folder, click new, search for workshop, workshop module. Ensure we give ourselves a name here for our workshop. I'm gonna do Connor demo and we're in. To start editing our workshop app, click layout. We'll click into our header and we'll change our title to the same as the workshop. For our icon, let's go ahead and change this to cube. And our color, we can look for blue four. Next, let's add the all orders table. So we'll go into add widget on the left side and click object table. Over here on the properties panel to the right, let's look for new object set variable. And we're gonna look for Connor demo, all orders. Click select. Let's make sure we give this a name. That'll be order object set. Next, in column configuration, we're going to want to add all properties. You'll notice here all we have is title currently showing. If we click add all properties, all of those properties from the ontology objects will render in. We can reorganize these here. So we want this to be as readable as possible with the most pertinent information being displayed first in the uh, each row. So let's do title, assignee, and consolidated customer ID. Then come down to select the property to sort by, and let's do item name. That'll just be clear and concise so we can you know, have an ascending item name filter. Scroll back up now to the column configuration, and let's rename some of these columns here to be a little more user-friendly. So if I click this down arrow on title, let's change title to item name. Now, our table's not fitting perfectly how we would want to in this current setup, so over here in layout, let's go to this section. We were previously clicked into object table. Let's go into the section. On the right side properties panel, you'll see the column width under dimensions. We'll select flex and change this to two. That gives us a little more breathing room. Next, let's add the filter widget. We will search for filter list. On the right side here, we will select our object set. That's going to take the table items and link it up with this filter. Here, we're going to add some filters. We're going to actually add all of our properties. The gist is we're going to add each property and assign all that we can to be a dropdown or multi-select dropdown filter. That will enable us to, instead of filter by having to type in the free text as a multi-select dropdown. You'll see more as I kind of configure this. So I'll click item name, You'll notice that right now we have it as a checkbox type filtering mechanism. That's not what we're gonna want. Oops, deleted it. So we'll click this drop down and we'll change this filter component from histogram to multi-select drop down. That enables us to filter as such. Rinse and repeat for all the other fields that you can. Some of them are not gonna let you use a filter component of multi-select drop down, and those just use the default that it kind of defaults in with. Now, just to clean this up a bit, I'm going to drag status up beneath item name and also order ID up closer to the top. I wanna to make sure that all of the common filter key, key ins are at the top. 
whereas some of these bigger graphicals are towards the bottom as they're probably more niche. Next, let's enable this switch that says allow users to add and remove filters. That's just going to let the end users be interactive with this filter panel. And let's, let's set our output variable name. We'll do order filters. Now we have our filter panel configured. However, you'll see that if we edit, if we apply a filter here, the left side table is not responsive. That's because we haven't taken our output filter and linked it up with the input object set for this table. To do so, let's create a variable. Click the plus sign. We'll look for object set and object set definition. Next, let's click into here and select our all orders object. Click select. We'll filter or we'll give us ourselves a name here. Filtered orders. Now click using a variable and we will select order filters. So now that we have our object set linked up with our order filters from our filter panel, let's pass that filtered set as the input to our table here. So I can select filtered orders. And now if I go and filter or apply a filter on the right side, like A4 paper, you'll see our table is responsive to our filter panel. Great, we're all linked up now. Lastly, let's click into the filter panel one last time. Click display. We'll want to make sure this is set to flex and one. We'll select light gray four just to make this pop a little more and blend with the header columns. Next, click up into the section directly above the filter pane. And let's just give this a name real quick. We'll call it filter Connor orders. And for our icon, we'll search for a filter icon. That will work. Next, we'll scroll down and toggle collapsible to be on. Let's change our icons to expand and minimize this. So we actually have an expand icon here that we can leverage. For some reason, I looked up expand, it wasn't coming up. So we're gonna actually look for menu closed. And then to collapse, we're gonna look for menu open. For formatting, let's just change the title, a little cleaner look. And for background color, we'll go for light gray four. Next, let's add the object details section. So we'll click into our object table and we'll click split section, new section on the right. Once we've done so, we'll click into our new section and we'll enable section header. We'll remove our title here and we're going to make this header format a title. Next, let's click the plus icon top left and we'll search for object set title. On the right now, let's look for object table one active object. That's really gonna take the selected object out of that table on the left and pull the information into a kind of deep dive descriptive view. Next, let's click add widget. We'll search for button, click into the button now. We'll move down to fill available horizontal space. We'll select that or rather toggle that and then click into display and we'll change this to auto slash max. Now under the button, let's click add section, add widget, and we're going to search for property list. Again, let's select that active object. Under this add item, we'll scroll down to add value. We'll click that and we'll look for item name. But rather than just click through here, let's actually just go click add all properties. You'll see now we have a display property list here showing all of the properties for the active item. If we need to change which properties are displayed, we can do so here. For example, in the training, it says to get rid of the static. That cleans up our look a little. We'll click add all properties again to add status back since actually we may want to keep that as we investigate any active items. And finally, let's come down to number of columns, check that down to one. That'll give us a cleaner look. Jumping out of our properties list now, I noticed we haven't renamed our base section here. So let's go and rename that to all orders. You'll see that's reflective of the title property here on the right side. And let's also add an icon for this. Let's look for table. Click into layout and we will go to all orders. We'll want to make sure that the changes were applied here as I had an issue. So just enable it. Your section header is showing and that your icon that you selected took. Okay. Looks good to me. Next, I noticed that we have a ellipsis here indicating that our values are kind of dragging outside of the, vis the visible text box. To fix that, click into this properties uh, description here, 
and let's scroll all the way to the bottom and we'll see under number of columns, enable value wrapping, just enable that. That'll just make sure we wrap text so we can see all the values that we need to see. Great, so next, let's go ahead and add a section below this all orders. So click back into that top level of all orders, click split section and let's do new section below. In our newly created section, let's go ahead and click set layout, change this to columns. We'll also go in here into section, enable section header, and let's title this charts. Also in dimensions, let's click flex and just keep that at one. Now within our formatted section, let's go ahead and add our first chart. So we'll look for a pie chart. We'll click add. In our input object set, we'll go for filtered orders. And here we'll filter on status. We will we'll keep enable ontology colors um, as enabled. Our aggregation, we can keep on count. If I edit this radius here, I, I don't really want to do that at all. One thing of note here, if we select legend, that'll show the legend for the different statuses involved in our data set. Right now, I actually like the legend, so we're going to leave that. Next, let's add our bar chart. So if you search bar chart, or you can just select this XY chart here, click layer bar under object set for data input. Let's click our filtered orders. We scroll down, we're going to look for days until due for our X axis under bar series segment by let's select status. Next, we can click back into the chart editor, scroll to the bottom, select Customize, located under bar orientation. This bit was a little confusing in the in the course. Now, all we want to check in here is that the bar orientation is set to vertical. It looks much better in vertical. We wouldn't really want this in horizontal in this case. Let's make sure we give our bar chart a name. Next, to further clean up our app, let's select our charts section and click the move arrow. You'll notice that just sw uh, swap spots with the item name table and monitor item information. This will just clean up the look for the user a little bit more. I think it makes a little more sense visually. Speaking of the item table, click onto that for a second. And here, per the training, we're gonna wanna reorder our column configuration. So let's make sure this starts with customer name, item name, status, assignee, days until due, and that's really as far as we need to go right now. Before we save and publish, let's click layout, click the first section under page, and let's go into the formatting a little. Let's change layout from no padding to regular. You'll notice that just makes this thing a little more visually stylish. Additionally, you have some other style settings that you can set here. So play around, see what fits yours the most. These are really up to your preference. I prefer to at least do a little bit of customization so that all of your different widgets aren't just directly touching. Lastly, go ahead and save and publish. If you want to check this out after you save and publish in the actual view mode outside of edit mode, click this button up top and we will see our workshop app in view mode. You'll notice the filters here on the right. We have a live reflective interactive graph here, clear filters. So feel free to play around with it for a second and familiarize yourself with what we built. Next up, we'll be configuring our actions. You'll notice this button right here is just button right now. We will likely be configuring that into something that actually drives an action on the data set. Before we continue, what is an action? you remember when we created our ontology object, there was the create, modify, delete actions. Those are the default actions associated with any ontology object. We can create new actions that pertain to the object type in the ontology. For example, our orders have an assignee. So that likely would be something that we would want as an action as associated with that ontology object. So you can assign an order to somebody. You'll notice in our table here, we have certain orders that don't have an assignee. So hence, we will rig this button up from just being called a regular old button to actually assign. So we can click a record, click assign, and actually assign that, rec that order to someone to action. Let's get started. Click Control J and let's search for the ontology manager. We'll open this in a new tab, importantly, because we want to keep our um, workshop app open. Navigate to your ontology object. It should be in your recently viewed. Next, click on data sources. Allow edits needs to be enabled and save. Next, click back into overview. We'll scroll down into action types, click new. Make sure that your current object type is set. Modify objects is selected, click next. We'll add properties here of assignee and status. 
we will map assignee to the assignee that's passed in at runtime. It's the status, however, will not be passed in at runtime. We just want this to be a static value. So let's just do assignee. We'll click next, give yourself a name. You can change your icon if you want. This is fine. Click next here. Make sure you keep this as organization in the training. It says user. However, that may introduce additional steps that we would need to handle. Click create and we should be good. Let's take a second to look at our action type here. In overview, it shows us our description, contributors, et cetera. In the rules, we can see what this action is actually triggering, both in TypeScript and kind of visualized here. Take a look at our parameters. This is what that user interface would look like to actually trigger the status or the order change rather. That's all we need to look at right now. Before we exit, let's go ahead and click save. Save to ontology, save changes. With that, we can jump back to our workshop app. I think we're still in view mode, so let's click this little drop down and edit. Next, we'll start working on actually configuring this button, if I can get to it, to assign an action. So we're going to assign that assign orders ability to this button. So let's do just that. Under button configuration, click button. We will change the name of this to assign and the on click event should not be event or URL or any of our other cool options that we have. It should be action. Under select an action, let's click that assign order action we just created. Now, before we finish configuring our button, let's zoom out so I can show something. If I click this assign button right now, we notice that we don't have a preset default parameter for our active order. The assign looks fine, but this should be defaulting to the selected object on our table to the left. Otherwise, it's kind of useless. To do so, let's click into our assign button. Scroll back in now that we're through that demo. Scroll down to parameter default. We'll click this all orders data set and local default value will be our active object. Now, if I scroll back out again, click the button, we can see it defaults to our selected value. Lastly, we want this button to stick out a bit more. So let's just edit the color on this over here on the right side. Click back into your button under intent. You can change this to any of these success being green, primary being blue, warning, orange, danger, red. Right now, primary is good. Or if you needed a custom color, you can do so. Now let's save and publish our app and click view. Something doesn't look right. So our charts clearly aren't formatted correctly. This count bar chart should be spanning much longer of the width of this, and this shouldn't take up as much This is a small pie chart. So let's go back into edit. And we'll change this column width from what it was on absolute to flex two. save and publish, click view. Now it looks more like what we expected. Now you have created a fully functional application here. You can filter on the right side using any of these filter criteria, whether it's status, if you want to just look at what open ones that you have, you can see the assignee, let's say you're looking for a specific person, all of these don't have any assignee, etc. You can collapse your filter bar by clicking this icon. And if I click into one of these unassigned values, click the object, click assign, and we will change that to Connor. Click submit. The ontology is automatically updated and we're off and running. Continue to play around with it. You'll also notice that within the training, there's some additional ways that you can enhance this workshop app with email notifications or comment sections, among many other things. So please take a look at that and we will be doing that in a follow on YouTube video. With that, we have completed part two of Speedrun, your first workshop in Palantir Foundry. I hope you enjoyed it. Like and subscribe and stay tuned for continued tutorials. Thank you.